Welcome back to the Weber Kettle Series brought to you by Fogo Charcoal here on Chud's Barbecue, everybody. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today we're going to cook up some ribs on the old Weber Kettle. Baby backs to be specific, and it is going to be delicious. These are some baby backs. It's one of my favorite sounds. Had them dry. And I do apologize for the horrible lighting right now. It's that time of day. But it soon shall pass. So these are baby back ribs, also known as loin back ribs. And as the name suggests, it's the bony underside of the pork loin, as opposed to spare ribs or St. Louis cut ribs, which is the bony backside of the pork belly. So basically, if you're choosing between the ribs, you got belly meat or loin meat to choose from. And these baby backs are really nice and meaty. They still got some good fat to them. And they're a lot smaller, meaning they're gonna cook up a bit quicker. And a major benefit of cooking baby backs is there's very little butchery required. You don't have to trim them up. You really don't have to do anything unless there's a weird flap hanging off like this. Other than that, they're usually pretty nicely squared up. You can take the membrane off if you want to. I tend to leave it on. I don't even think this one has a membrane on it. So all we really need to do is throw some seasoning on it. Generally speaking on this channel, I'm a big fan of just salt and pepper, keeping it real classic. But especially with a cut like this where it's loin meat, it really does benefit from having some extra flavors. So today I'm going to go on with some good old fashioned chud rub. This is a pretty basic mix that I make, mostly salt and pepper with some garlic, paprika, other stuff in there as well. And as always, we want to start on the underside. No need for a binder. These are still pretty damp right out of the cryovac, but you can if you want. Nice heavy coating all the way around. Add it in there, flip it over, and same to the top. This is a great way to test out new rubs too. Find something on the store, you make one yourself. Baby back ribs is a great place to try it out. Try and fight the wind, looking good to me. And don't forget the sides, folks. Come on. We're gonna let this sit for just a little bit. Let the salt really work into the meat, draw out some moisture. It's really gonna help this rub stick. Not a necessary step, but hey, I've got a few minutes to kill anyway while we fire up the Weber. Just about halfway full of Fogo Premium Lump Charcoal. On sale now. Link in description. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> Don't do that. Always clean your Weber, folks. Now, for this cook, we're going to use the slow and sear the way it's intended to be used. So, with some more Fogo Premium Charcoal, we're going to fill up most of this. So basically I've got all the charcoal over here and I left a little pocket on this side where the lit charcoal is going to go. And that way it's going to slowly burn this way. Very similar to the snake method. I'm also going to go in here and there with some small chunks of whatever hardwood you like. This is some pecan. That way as it burns, it'll hit these and you'll get some nice smoke. Looking good. We're also going to take a nice thick one and pop it right where the coals are going to go. All righty, and in we go. Beautiful. Go ahead and fill up this water reservoir with some hot water. Takes about a full quart. And then on with our babies. I'm gonna kind of plump these up a little bit. I'm aiming the fatty side toward the fire, just cause that can take a little bit more heat. And now we're gonna shut it down. Vents over the meat, always. Oh, this thing needs a cleaning. Keep your Weber's clean, folks. Have some respect. All right, let's let this thing get up to temp. All right, it's been about 10, 15 minutes. And we are humming right along at 250, 275. And that's what I'm going to aim for, right between 250 and 300 degrees. And once it gets up to 300, I'll probably shut down the dampers a little bit to slow the airflow. And that should keep us right in that range. But I will keep you posted. After an hour and a half, we have shot up to about 325, 350. So I'm going to just close this off. Ow! Close this off about halfway. And that should do it. We are four hours into this cook. And I honestly have yet to lift the lid. I haven't had to. This thing has been holding incredibly even temps the entire time. No spikes whatsoever. Every now and then a new wood chunk will hit and we'll get some smoke coming out of here. But it's time to see how it's looking. I'm assuming it's pretty dark. Not much airflow in there, but hey, let's take a look. Ooh, looking real nice. Got some lovely color on there. Bones are starting to pull back on this side. It's a nice looking rack of ribs. Let's see how she's temping. 185. Ooh, this side feels nice and tender. 187, so pretty even across. Feeling nice and tender. I think we're pretty close to being done here. This fatty side is looking nice and juicy. This leaner side, looking a little dry. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a bit of a spritz real quick. A little apple cider vinegar. And we're just gonna let this keep on cooking. But first, I'm gonna throw a couple more chunks of charcoal in there just to make sure it finishes off strong. Especially now that I killed all the internal heat. We're gonna wanna get some of that back. That ought to do. 
And then we're gonna hit it with a little light brown sugar. Try not to spill too much. That's just gonna give us a nice little sugary glaze on the outside. And you could wrap these up at this point, but I'm gonna keep them open the whole time. Kind of go for that dry rub rib situation. Little candy rib, sounds good to me. And this should just melt right on and give us some beautiful color and some wonderful flavor, of course. Looking good. Back on the lid goes. <laughs> And we'll check back in in probably about an hour. We're about five, five and a half hours later, and these things are looking done. Probing nice and tender, feeling nice and tender. Got a great give to them. Color is looking absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna pull these off, pop them onto the table, and let them rest down to around 140, and then we'll slice on in. Ow! Very happy with that slow and sear. That charcoal method works great. Beautiful color on those. I'm getting hungry. Let's slice on in. Now when it comes to ribs, I usually cut them upside down just because I'm not very good at cutting them the regular way, especially when it comes to baby bags because these bones are pretty pesky. They kind of curve and twist. So it's nice to be able to see what you're doing, but I'm sure I will botch at least a few of these. Been a while since I had some baby backs on a Weber kettle, I tell you what. Smelling good, smelling smoky. Looking real nice. That is a good looking baby back. Definitely got a smoke ring on there. Beautiful color. And look at all that thick, juicy meat on there. Let's have a bite. Mm-hmm. That is good. Mm. Definitely a loin. A little dry, as we expected. It is pork loin after all, but by no means is it not delicious. Still pretty juicy, but you know, I'm usually eating spare ribs, so. But that is lovely, you know, nice and thick, nice and tender. Ooh, mm. oh, that was a good bite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the sweetness on there is a perfect little finishing note. Comes right off the bone, nice and clean. That's what you want to see. Definitely nice and tender. Gotta love that. For such an easy cook, too. Oh, that is good. I think the further I get down the rack, the fattier they get. Like, that's a good looking baby back to me. Not nearly as much lean meat on there, you know? That meat closest to the bone is nice and fatty and juicy. And it's kind of like a chicken wing, you know? These thinner ones, you get a much better bark to meat ratio. Oh my God. It's like candy. Mmm. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah, definitely aim for the thicker end. Mmm. Beautiful looking ribs, folks. Couldn't be simpler. I mean, come on. I love a baby back. And it's like a five hour cook, too. Probably could have been done quicker, too. You know, if you wrap these up after like three or four hours, you could probably make this into a four hour cook. Mmm. Doesn't even need sauce. It's got the sweetness, it's full of flavor, nice and smoky. And it's by far the most hands-off cook I've done in a long time. It was a set it and forget it cook, you know? I didn't have to worry about throwing wood chunks on, didn't have to babysit the fire. I just kept an eye on it to make sure it didn't spike. And uh, yeah, I guess the results kind of speak for themselves here. Very tender. Beautiful looking ribs. That brown sugar is so nice. I haven't had like a really sweet rib like this in a long time. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. <laughs> All right, y'all, that is it. That is how to make some super tasty baby back ribs on your Weber kettle. There are tons of recipes, techniques, different sauces, rubs, spritzes, you name it, that you could use to make some baby back ribs, but this is a super approachable, easy way that is great for the beginner. All you need is some quality charcoal, a rack of baby back ribs, some simple seasoning, and then let your slow and sear rock for pretty much the entire cook. Couldn't be easier. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button and dropping a like on this video. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. If you do give this recipe try for yourself be sure to tag me on instagram at chuds barbecue i love to see what y'all are cooking big thank you to fogo charcoal best charcoal in the game thank you for sponsoring this series and until the next time i see you please go cook something outside peace